the first minister Anuradha looked at the silent princess and said, Mother! Why are you not speaking? Do you still believe in Vandiyadeva? He asked. Sir! Minister Tiluk! What shall I say? If you keep talking for a while longer, it seems you will make me doubt myself. Said the princess. Such are the times, mother. It's not easy these days to decide who to trust and who not to trust. So many enemies on all sides, so many mysterious intrigues going on. Said Prime Minister Anuradhar. Yet it seems that there is no mystery or intrigue they do not know. How did you know so much about the messenger I sent? Kundave Devi asked. Amini. I am endowed with a thousand eyes and two thousand ears. They are spread all over the country. My men are in the Palyavur Palace. Among the bodyguards of the Isla Irani of Palvur there is one who sends me messages. There are many people who wander from town to town bringing news like all Workadian. Nothing can happen in the surrounding countries without my knowledge. That's what I'm thinking. But who knows? There may be people who can deceive me too. Mysteries may be going on that I don't know about. When the first minister said this, Kundeva thought that this wicked man also knew that Pani's Selvan was now in Sudamani Viharam. It was with great difficulty that she suppressed it without releasing it. Sir! All you say may be true, but I cannot believe that the warrior of the monkey clan should be the concubine of the Queen of Pavur. Please set him free! She said. Think well, mother. That woman Nandini has some magical power. The devotee of Shiva, Madhurand Hagen, fell into her trap and desired the kingdom. Sambuvarayar's son Kanthamaran has taken her straw and gone to Adithakari Kalan. Parthapendra, the archenemy of the Palyavetarayas, has now become the slave of the Queen of Palyavur. Madhurand Hagen has divided the Chola kingdom into two. He has come before him to reconcile by giving a portion and a portion to Adithakari Kalan. What iniquity is this? To divide the kingdom in two? This is the great kingdom that our clan ancestors worked so hard to unite and enlarge. You don't want to divide the kingdom, neither do I, mother. Even Parthapendra would have been furious if he had suggested this idea ten days ago. Now he is the one who stands at the head of this arrangement. What a strange thing! What kind of magical power does that Pavur queen possess? Princess! I meant to ask you that. You ask me. Let it go, why are you so sure that Vandiyadeva alone will not fall under her magical power? Sir! If you ask the reason, I don't know how to tell. They say that mind is witness to mind. Something seems certain in my mind that a warrior of the Vinarkula would not commit such a betrayal. Then let's test it, mother. So what exam? We must send a messenger to Kanchi at once. We must send a straw to the most trusted man of Aditha Kari Kalan. About what? A little while ago, you called Nandini a poisonous snake and apologized for it. In fact, she is many times more deadly than a poisonous snake. She plans to completely destroy this Chola clan and eliminate Buntadu. Oh my god! What a horror! When Kundave said that, her inner sea was churned with countless waves. She has induced Sambuvarayar to invite your Damayan Aditha Kari Kalan to Kadampur Palace. She is talking about marrying one of Sambuvarayar's daughters and one of Palyavatarayar Kumari to Kari Kalan. She is also going to decide the matter of reconciling the kingdom in two. All this is open talk. But no one knows what her secret intentions are. Everything. Even I, who pride myself on knowing, could not discern her intention. What shall we do about it, sir? Aditha Kari Kalan must somehow be prevented from going to Kadampur Mansion. For that you and I must send a leaf to Vandi Adivan. If Kari Kalan goes to Kadampur Mansion against our will, Vandiyadeva must also go with him. He must continue to watch over your daughter like a shadow that does not love her body. He must not hesitate even to meet Nandini alone. Kundave sighed, she realized how important the Prime Minister was saying. She couldn't guess whether he was saying it knowing all the details, 
or just keeping the royal motive in mind. Sir. Why do you consider it so important to prevent their meeting? She asked. Mother. Some of Veerapandian's mendicants have vowed to destroy the Colacula. New gold coins are going to them from the treasury of the great Palyavatareya. Need I say anything more about it? No, she mumbled. She remembers the prince lying with Suram in Sudamani Viharam. Isn't Bonnie's wealth also fraught with dangers? Sir. You are lucky to be the prime minister on this occasion of coming to Kol Aland by accident and accident. What arrangements have you made for my brother? She asked. In all the temples, Vishnu, and temples in the Chola country, I have prayed for the prince's welfare and asked the Archana to perform a Bishakam. Similarly, they are going to pray in Buddhist Viharas and Jain schools. Buddhist monks are going to conduct a mandala of special prayers in Nagaib Patanam Sudamani Viharam. What else do you say we can do? Kundave noticed any change in the face of the first minister while he was talking about Sudamani Viharam, but there was nothing. Sir. I remember one thing about Sudamani Viharam. The great Palyavatare has some anger towards Sudamani Viharam. That anger has subsided since the news came that the Bhikkhus are going to crown the prince in Sri Lanka. Even if they blame the disappearance of the prince on the Bhikkhus of Sudamani Viharam, they will have to take care of it, she said. At once, mother. I will send a small army if necessary to guard Sudamani Vihara with the Emperor's orders. What do you say about sending Vandiyadeva to Kanchi? Sir. Would it not be better to send someone else for such an important matter? If only you have faith in him, I would like to send him. I am also aware of his heroic deeds. We should send the fearless Asagaya Surana for this task. Today, when I was coming to the palace courtyard, I saw with my own eyes. What he has done to that physician. If I had not interfered, the physician's son would have been able to cure Yama. He would have gone. Younger Brady was excited to hear this. Yet with little hesitation, is it enough to be a hero? A coward? How soon the fight has begun. If you wish, I will also send my disciple Tirumalai. He is known for his calm thinking. Said Anuradha. God knows what is inside the young man's heart, or not, it seems that one wants to send one to accompany the other. She thought.